I was sitting in that chair thinking, all these women are like professional preachers and worship artists. This is what they do for a job. And I'm not like I have a full time corporate job. I like my podcast, my books. I literally do that for fun. I do that because I enjoy it. I do this. I do this right now um, because I love it. And that's what I was thinking in my mind. Right. It's like, what can I offer these people? Because I'm not a professional preacher. And that's when I was so convicted after that, because walking up on that on the set, I just was like, no, boom, that's exactly why I'm here. That's it. Hello, Annie Bayfield. Did you forget the whole mission of your podcast that you reiterate every time you have a guest on? The mission of Made to Shine is to remind every single person that you have a ministry. It doesn't matter if you're a corporate sales executive, if you are a professional pastor and have a church, if you're a college student, if you're a high school student, if you're leading a fishing club, a Harry Potter club, or a Bible study, you have a ministry. It is the way you shine God's light in any space that you have, any space that you have. I believe every single person has a ministry. Ministry isn't just for preachers and it's not just for pastors. It's the way you shine the light that God gave you through his spirit in all spaces that he's trusted you to walk. That means you on your college campus. That means you at your corporate job. That means you in high school. That means you with your friends at the bar or the restaurant. That means you wherever you are, you have the responsibility to shine God's light light in that space and you get the chance to friend you are beautiful you are worthy and you are made to shine party people how are we doing folks i am coming to you with my crazy natural curly hair you know what i'm committed i've decided and this is because i was speaking with a friend yesterday and she was like i try to put heat on my hair the least amount of times as possible and i realized that me as Andy mayfield i am constantly like putting heat on my hair because i don't wear my natural hair ever and i was convicted yeah that's probably why i'm doing this and saying this but i am committed to wearing my natural curly hair for at least a week you thought I was going to say like, this is my life. Absolutely not. Y'all, I have to take this off of my dock because, okay. My family group text, love my fam, but it's insane. They just, I don't, I'm like, what do you, you just look at Instagram reels all day? Like, why are you sending all these reels? And it was in my dock or in my, you call that a dock? And I just couldn't do this and that. We're simplifying things. So yeah, I'm simplifying things. Things such as wearing my natural hair more often. I also realized, this is just for my ladies, I, it's a lot of time invested to do your hair each week. I only actually wash my hair once a week and then I blow dry it once a week. But even then, that's like 45 minutes. I could be doing other income producing activities or just non-income producing activities. Things like not doing my hair. I hate doing my hair. I'll be honest. I absolutely despise doing my hair. So this is my commitment. I'm wearing my natural hair for a week. And I'm actually going to New York this week. I'm going to the US Open. I'm stoked. So I'm holding true to that commitment. Um, all that to say, and other advancements in the Annie Mayfield world element has now a canned sparkling water option. This is not an ad. I wish it was an ad. You know, I've reached out to Element so many times asking for a promo code for, for you guys because I believe in Element so much. I know some of you have gotten Element because you've listened to my podcast and you've listened to me speak of it and they have not gotten back. So if anyone knows Element or has a connection, bother them for me, please, because I love it and I'd love to give my community, save them some money on it because it is phenomenal. But they do have a sparkling energy, um, not energy, sorry, sparkling water version now in a can, which again, going back to slimifying things, you don't have to get your own water and put mix in it. It's already there for you. So let's talk about that for a second, shall we? Um, <laughs> in all seriousness, I'm excited for today's conversation. and. Yesterday, I, you guys know this, but I have like a Google Doc that 
as ideas just come to me on what I want to speak to y'all about, I just plop them in there. And yesterday, I, I had a really bizarre week last week. We'll get to that. But yesterday, I just felt this conviction, like any, just ask God. Ask God what he wants you to talk about. And actually this morning is when I felt super convicted on what it was that I feel like God wants me to say. And now that I kind of know, this is something that I feel like I talk about here and there a lot, but I've never just really nipped in the butt and said, we're talking about this. We're going to do a whole episode on this. But the this that we're talking about is the reason behind the podcast. It's the mission behind the podcast. It's the reason why I get so excited and I get so amped and passionate about talking around this very concept. And that very concept is this idea that every single person has a ministry. Well, Annie, what's a ministry? A ministry is literally just how you take responsibility for shining God's light in every area that he has you. Well, Annie, why do you get so passionate about that? I get so passionate about that because for so long, and hopefully you can't hear my washer and dryer in the back of this. I just realized it's kind of tussling a lot because I have my shoes in there. Um, so someone's not getting beat up in the background, if that's what you're thinking. But the reason I get so passionate about that is because for so long, I was kind of under the impression and the belief that it was an either or. Like either I was going to be this successful entrepreneur being used by God and working for God, not necessarily in a church environment, but in like an entrepreneurial en endeavor and environment. Or I had a corporate job, you know, like, or I did this thing or I did that thing. And I think we all think that way. It's like, I'm either being used by God in this capacity, or I'm not being used by God at all. Maybe you're a stay at home mom right now. And you believe like, I'm only like as good for God as how I'm used for him. And I thought I was going to be used for him in the capacity of being an author or being a speaker or being a, a whatever have you, a podcast host of being a preacher, being a pastor. But right now you're a stay at home mom. And all you're doing is cleaning poopy diapers. And you're like, God is not using me at all. Or maybe you're a high schooler and you're about to go to college and you have this friend that's like, I'm not going to college. I'm going to go be a missionary in some other country. And you're like, well, am I like, am, does God not like me? Because I don't feel called to do that. But I feel called to go get the SCC college experience and, and be part of a sorority and be part of all those things. Or maybe... It's you have this club at your college or this club at your corporate job and it's about ministry and it's about doing a Bible study, all these things, and you don't feel called to be a part of it, but you feel called to start a fishing club or start a whatever club. And you're like, because I'm not part of that Bible study club, does that mean God's not using me in this fishing club or Harry Potter club that I want to start? Or maybe you're in corporate America. And you see all these people starting these organizations or leading these churches or leading these small groups or being or whatever have you. And you're like, well, am I not being used by God? Am I less loved by God? Because I'm trying to be faithful in this corporate America season that maybe I don't even really want to be in right now. But I see all these other people doing things for God. I used to think. One. That. I wasn't being used by God because I had a corporate job and I was in corporate, not like full-time writer, full-time speaker, full-time preacher. I didn't work at a church. And the underlying layer of that, that I don't think I would have said at the time, but I think I believed was because I'm not working for God in that capacity. I definitely don't have a ministry. That's just for preachers and people who work at churches. And two, I feel like I'm I'm probably loved less by God or I'm less valuable to God because I'm not working directly for him. Last week, I bizarre week, as I as I mentioned. Um I'm always super self-conscious of drinking things on this podcast. Because my sister has that thing where she gets very irritated by people's gulping noises. And she said, I gulp a lot. And she told me that when I was like 12. And 
26, I'm now 26, that still stuck with me. So I'm so sorry if you have that thing too, but I'm, I'm going to sit my element. So um, last week was a bizarre week. I, when I say bizarre, it was such a cool week, uh, but it, I just, I had a lot of bizarre perspectives um, that I had such an honor and privilege to kind of sit in on, but it was, it was a weird, it was a weird week. So let me explain. Last Wednesday, I was on this really fun, it's, it's not out yet, but the promo for it's out. So I guess I can talk about it, but it's like the first ever Christian based talk show. And my dear friend, Kim Craphill. Um, she's amazing. I, she actually like, I, it's so funny because I thought it was Crab Hill. And then she said Crab Hill on the show last week. I was like, oh my gosh, RIP. I've been saying it wrong. Um, she's actually amazing. And she has this, this ministry, um, that she goes and she does all these talk shows and gets to interview these cool people. So anyways, I had the honor of being on the show and also on the show was all these other women that were amazing like worship singers leading churches all this stuff and i remember i was backstage in the green room getting my makeup done which i hate getting my makeup done i'm very weird about people touching my face especially like i'm really bad with fake eyelashes because i fidget so much so um makeup artists have a hard time with me it's like trying to put makeup on a spastic bunny and i also like to talk a lot and that's not good when you're putting, you know, makeup on the face that one is, was talking with. And so all that to say, lots of makeup. And I was just kind of sitting in the green room, took a long time. And all these amazing women that I was the last one to go. And all these women that had gone on before me were coming in, filing through. And I was just able to hear their stories. And man, these were some powerhouse women. And I wish I could sit here in this pink chair and tell you that while I was in that makeup chair, all I could think was these women are awesome, which I, it was like, these women are awesome. I'm so encouraged by them. And I was, but I also felt like, crap, I'm the last one to go. Why do I have to be the last one to go? Why couldn't I have gone first? You know, like I was always that kid that volunteered to have her project done first and presented to the class first, not because I was super confident, because I was like, there's no other standard you can hold me to. I know Smarty Pants Charlotte Lee's class project is going to be better than mine. So you bet my bottom dollar I'm not going after her. Nope, I will go first. Thank you. So yeah, I'm sitting in this chair. I'm like, crap. God, really? You put me last in the lineup. Why could I not have been first? Because there are so many other women that should have been last. Because now everyone's comparing me to them. And but it's funny because they're not, right? We just compare ourselves to other people. That's what I was thinking. I felt like such an imposter. And you know what the crux of it was? And I told my boyfriend this after. I was like, I was sitting in that chair thinking, all these women are like professional preachers and worship artists. This is what they do for a job. I mean, they're, they're professionals. If you can coin someone as a professional minister. Um, and I'm not like, I have a full-time corporate job. I like my podcast, my books. I literally do that for fun. I do that because I enjoy it. I do this. I do this right now um, because I love it. And sometimes I don't want to do it because it's hard, but I just feel so called to it because I enjoy it, but I'm not a professional. Like I didn't go to seminary. I didn't, um, I don't do this professionally. Like my occupation status is corporate sales executive. And that's what I was thinking in my mind right? It's like, what can I offer these people? Because I'm not a professional preacher. And that's when I was so convicted after that. Because walking up on that, on the set, I just was like, no, boo, that's exactly why I'm here. That's it. Hello, Annie Bayfield. Did you forget the whole mission of your podcast that you reiterate every time you have a guest on? The mission of Made to Shine is to remind every single person that you have a ministry. It doesn't matter if you're a corporate sales executive, if you are a professional pastor and have a church, if you're a college student, if you're a high school student, if you're leading a fishing club, a Harry Potter club, or a Bible study, you have a ministry. It is the way you shine God's light in any space that you have, any space that you have. 
I think about um, Genesis 9, 12. God tells us that to remember us or to remind us of his covenant with us. He's going to put a rainbow in the sky. Well, guess what? A rainbow in the sky doesn't always look like a rainbow. Sometimes it looks like the sunshine, which radiates white light. And white light is the perfect rainbow in the sky because it has the perfect amount of every single color in the rainbow reflected in that white light. Sometimes ministry doesn't look like exactly what you think ministry is going to look like, which might be a preacher in a pulpit. Sometimes it looks like you being a light in your corporate sales job where someone was a booty toot to you, but you're nice to them and you're forgiving to them, knowing that your heavenly father forgave you of your sins and transgressions so you can be kind to what they don't even know to say I'm sorry about with how rude they were to you. Maybe it looks like shining your light in your fraternity where guys are using girls for their body because they're insecure about their own self and they think if they can get laid more often, it will make them more cool and you actually have standards for how you're going to treat girls and how you're going to respect women. Maybe your ministry is how you show up in your high school. It's how you, you know, don't cheat on that test when everybody's prompting you to. Maybe it's how you, you are the voluntary designated driver when all your friends just want to get blackout drunk and you offer to take care of them in that environment. It's not staying away from the bar, staying away from the people that are having bad behavior, but being a light in those people's lives. I forgot that. Like me. I created or I have the podcast that that's the mission statement. And I forgot that in that moment. And that's what I think is also so cool is like, we always need that reminder constantly, constantly. And the reason I get so passionate about that is because we forget that every day. I have a podcast and that's literally the mission statement of the podcast. And I forgot that sitting in that chair. Fast forward to a few days after that TV show airing. I took a 19 sixth grade girls to camp this weekend for my church's retreat. And they were crazy. We had a lot. Sixth graders, very emotional. Lots of crying. Um, and I'm not really good in that situation. Like my instinct is to say, suck it up. But you can't do that. You know what I mean? Um, I'm, I'm not like, even growing up, I wasn't the one people called to babysit. I'm much more, I'm much better talking at like young adults. Like I like going deep. I like dealing with those emotions. Kids, I'm like, I'm just being vulnerable with you. I'm not very, I'm still working on how to do that. It was always my sisters that were much better at that. So this weekend was really hard for me on that standpoint. And there were so many times I felt like I'm not a professional preacher. I don't know what to say to you. I don't know. Like when they, they were asking me tough questions, like what's, you know, like is, they literally asked me, it's like, is God a girl or a boy? I was like, well, he's definitely a, a male, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But they were asking me like really hard questions. I was like, I'm not cut out for this. But God reminded me again, Annie, I gave you a ministry. It's how you love these girls. It's how you show up with whatever I give you. Like he said to Moses, what do you have? Sometimes all you have is a willing spirit. God will meet you there. My point is, whether you're on a TV show, whether you're at camp with a bunch of sixth grade girls and you feel insufficient, whether you're at your high school, whether you're at your college, whether with, you're with your friends at a bar, whether you are with your friends at church, whether you're the one leading the church, whether you're participating in a small group or leading the small group, whether you're at CVS or you're at, you're in Louisiana buying flavored crickets. That was a very bizarre example right there, but just just came out. Whether you're in New York at the US Open, which I'm about to go to, whether you're on the court playing the match, you have a ministry. And I would be the first to let you know what I've realized being in the corporate America space and getting the chance to speak with people that work in the church like on this podcast, there's, I've spoken with preachers. I've spoken with pastors. I've spoken with people that are leading massive groups of people in more like what you think of when you think ministry environments. Corporate America is where we need believers the most right now. Your college campus, at your fraternity house, at your sorority party or function, 
or formal. Your high school on a Friday night with your friends as they experiment with drinking or sex or whatever have you. That is where we need believers the most right now. On Sunday, your pastor who they're talking to, aka the people we think of when we think of people having a ministry, they're speaking with people that at least are in church. Like, do, do you realize that? The people that your preacher, your pastor, the people that you kind of seclude is having a ministry, the people that I saw on this TV show that have a ministry, they're, they're speaking to people that are at least listening to a Christian talk show, that are at least sitting their butt in church or streaming church online. You, as someone in corporate America, you as someone leading your fraternity, you as someone showing up on Friday night with your group of friends, experimenting with all these things in high school, you have an opportunity to shine light in an area with people that probably going to church on Sunday is the last thing on their mind. Do you realize the power in that? Do you realize the power in that? God trusted you with a ministry to touch areas of darkness that the, the building of churches are not touching right now. You have an opportunity to be what the church has always meant to be, which is a hospital, not a country club. You can offer people love and forgiveness and grace and compassion and kindness in a way that meets them where they're at, in a place that they probably would never, ever, ever think church would come to them to. Friday night, your friend experimenting with drugs and alcohol. Your, your, your girlfriend that's just been sleeping around with a bunch of people and y'all are, y'all are talking at a party on a Saturday night. Your corporate America job where people are after money and status and rank and promotion and what's in it for me. You have the opportunity to show by example, that's key, by example, your light. I really did used to think that like God loved me less because he obviously didn't want me to have a full-time ministry because he didn't just clip his fingers and my books were providing for me financially or this podcast, which I make no money off of. I literally just do for fun. I don't yeah, like make money off of this, um, but God could make it so that I did. Right. But I don't. So I used to think, okay, well, obviously God doesn't want me to have a ministry or doesn't want me to do this full time. What if instead it's my very indication that God trusts me with the people that me having a ministry in the way I wanted it to would never reach? He trusts me to be in my corporate job. And quite frankly, and Bill Johnson once said this, um, he used to work for Apple. He said this in an interview of his, we have so many believers leaving the marketplace, leaving the corporate workforce. And that's exactly where we need believers because there is so much darkness here. And if God has trusted you to be in corporate America and you're a believer, do you recognize what that says about what God's trusting you with? We live in such a, I want to be my own boss. I want to write my own destiny culture. I, I mean, that, that used to be me. I used to think that like, I, I was like, I never want to be in corporate America. Corporate America means that I failed. Um, I thought that in college, but what being in corporate has allowed me to see is it teaches you so much about submitting to authority, which hello submission is what we're called to do as Jesus followers, because we have to submit to Christ. And not only that, but you truly have the ability to touch people that otherwise would not be touched when you're in corporate America, because you are touching people that are 
in more susceptible to adopting the messaging of the environment, which is make the most what, out of what you can, squeeze the juice out of this opportunity. What's in it for me? What's in it for me? What's in it for me? Climb the ladder, climb the ladder, get the promotion, get the rank, step on whoever you need to in order to climb the rank. You have the opportunity to show them a different way by example. Sharing the light of Jesus, not by hitting people over the head with scripture in corporate America, but by showing up in a way that says, I know who I am independent of the outcome of my corporate efforts. That's so powerful. That's so powerful. If you're in college, if you're in high school, same thing. I think we have so many believers like afraid to, to hang out in more secular areas. Y'all, Jesus sat with the prostitutes. He sat with the tax collector. He said, follow me. The Pharisees were the one that refused to get their hands dirty. So don't limit God to this box. Even this week with my sixth graders, I was just thinking, I was like, man, God is the God. Like you really get to know God in the mundane, the mundanity, in the mundane of your life, in the transition. And this morning I was in Matthew and it was about Jesus in the temple. And like, as Jesus was walking out of the temple, his disciple was like, look, Lord, isn't this temple tremendous? And Jesus was like, I tell you what, this temple isn't going to be existing in the next couple of years. Every stone will fall. And what that taught me is like that disciple told him that as Jesus was walking out, oftentimes our relationship with Jesus is built in the transition of our life. It's not in church on Sunday. It's, it's in every moment, every moment of our life. Well, guess what? Your ministry is in every space that you hold, every space you hold. So your corporate job and when you go to church and when you tune into this kind of content, but more so what you do after you tune into this kind of content, how you treat the receptionist at the restaurant or your family, your mom and dad, your sister, your brother, your friend, that person you haven't talked to in years, your cohorts at your job, your cohorts in your fraternity, your shorty, how you treat them with kindness and love and grace and understanding and mercy. Out of that overflow from what you've received from that with your own relationship with your heavenly father. You have a ministry. It might not look like what you thought, but I would offer you the suggestion. Oftentimes we're missing the power of what we're doing and the impact we're making in our life because we're looking for it in places that it was never meant to be found. You have a ministry right where you're at. There's a reason you're at where you're at. And God is trusting you to grow right where you're at. Where that's going to lead, I don't know. But instead of asking, what else could I be doing or grading ourselves based off of what we're not doing or where we're not at, let us say thank you, Jesus, for him to trust us with where we are and bloom where we're planted and let him take care of the outcome. You are so needed in this world right where you're at. And what you are probably grading is a lack of your ministry or a lack of your impact for God. I think God is up there in heaven celebrating every time you show kindness to a coworker, every time you show forgiveness to your fraternity brother, every time you show grace to that high school friend that's doing things she's probably not. I think heaven's celebrating you because that's exactly what Jesus did with every single person in scripture that we get all of our massive stories from. The Samaritans, the, the women sleeping around, the prostitutes, the, the people that are too busy to focus on Jesus because they're so busy with their schedule, the tax collectors, the greedy people, the upset people, the unforgiving people. Like that's the grace God showed us. And God is trusting you to show that in areas that need it the most. The corporate world, the fraternity world, the college world, the high school party scene. Don't take that lightly. Dear Heavenly Father, there are a lot of really amazing, gifted, talented children of yours listening today. I pray that they do not feel as if their efforts are going to waste, 
but that they know that you see them and that you trusted them with the very space that you gave them. And I pray that they feel the encouragement to shine your light through them in all spaces that you've given them to shine that light through. Whether it's being a teacher or a lawyer or a writer or an author or a podcaster or a high school student or a college football player or a corporate lawyer or an engineer or a salesperson or a marketing executive, whatever it is, Lord, I pray that instead of looking at us as um, outsiders away from ministry because we're not professional preachers, or maybe we are. I pray that we understand whatever space you gave us, that's the space you've called us to and trusted us with to shine your light. And that it is in these more secular spaces that we need your light the most. Not to have those people not following you speak over us, but to have out of the outflow of the people that are following you who speak over us and us just coming to you to speak over us, the outflow of that for us to have the strength to go sit with the people that need to know you the most. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us the courage and the strength for trusting us with the space you've led us to. And may we not minimize what that is or belittle what that is because it doesn't look like what we thought. In Jesus' name, amen. And I hope that this blessed you and encouraged you, reminded you that God gave you a unique light and it is your job to shine it in this world because we need you to. That being said, if you were blessed by this message and you can think of anybody else that also needs this type of encouragement, do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe, leave me a comment. Uh, It helps me out a lot and helps this message that I do believe God gave my heart to share with the world gets out. I hope you have such an amazing rest of your day.